Hello, this tutorial is about the Schillinger Hybrid 4-part harmony technique, which may be used for writing series of extended chords and thirds in a diatonic context. We will look at chord structures, progressions and examples. At the end of this video there's a composition example with hybrid harmony. Let's introduce the subject, which belongs to the domain of Schillinger Systems of Harmony, an important aspect in his system of musical composition. In his special theory of harmony we are considering chords and thirds, created from a 7-pitch diatonic scale. With these chords we may create either diatonic or symmetric chord progressions. Root cycles are at the basis of such progressions. If you are new to this system, you may want to watch the two tutorials about Schillinger nomenclature on this channel. When using chords with dissonant chordal functions, such as the 7th, 9th or 11th, we have to apply fairly strict rules for dissonant note preparation and resolution. In Schillinger's special theory of harmony, extended chords have chord structure and position limitations. I discussed these chord types in a series of 5 episodes. For example, extended chords S9 and S11 are used in root position only. The dissonant 7, 9 and 11 must be correctly prepared and resolved, involving suspensions and stepwise motion. A relevant aspect for this tutorial is that 9th and 11th chords may only be used as single occurrence chords whereas S5 and S7 may be written in series. And that is where hybrid harmony enters the stage. Hybrid harmony may be written in either 5 or 4 parts and is based on a two-layer approach with a bass versus upper parts. A while ago I created two tutorials about hybrid 5-part harmony. Although they are fairly short videos without a voiceover, in combination with this episode about 4-part hybrid harmony, they cover the subject extensively. Hybrid harmony allows us to write series of extended chords, with more freedom in handling dissonance, without strict voice leading rules. Their combination with traditional diatonic chord progressions offers great potential for writing interesting harmony in a mostly tonal context. Hybrid 4-part harmony chords have a limited set of structures. The diagram shows the two-layer approach with the bass part versus the three upper parts. Chord structures are characterized by the highest upper chordal function, also known as the tension. Chord forms have a fixed structure with root in the bass and a subset of three upper functions shown here at the top. The structures marked with asterisk symbol are less frequently used. For example, the upper structure of the S9 usually contains the 3, 7 and 9, but occasionally the third is omitted and replaced by root doubling. The total is a set of 11 chord structures shown here in staff notation for major chord types. The chord tension label is shown at the bottom. The upper layer chordal function numbers are shown above the staff, and I also show the best equivalent diatonic chord label in jazz notation. Let's listen to the 11 hybrid 4 part harmony chord structures. The upper parts may be written as a triad in any position and voicing. Here I show examples of the minor triad S5 with the upper part in root or inverted position and in closed or open voicing.
we may do the same for the hybrid harmony 7th and 9th chords. Here we have example voicings of the regular and less frequently used structures for dominant 7th and various S9 chord types. In the example voicings of the S11 and S13, I deliberately use altered chordal functions, such as the sharp 11, the minor versus major 7th, which are all allowed in this system, depending on the context. The chord labels below the staff do not indicate all omitted functions or are notated as polychords. Finally, here are some more voicing examples, illustrating the various positions and modal variants. After covering the possible hybrid four-part harmony chord structures, now it's time to start writing chord progressions. This diagram is an overview of the degrees of freedom, the parameters that will control the series of consecutive chords. These are the system of harmony, the chord structure tension and type. We already saw the 11 hybrid harmony chord structures with tension number between S5 and S13. We may design a progression with either constant or variable tension. The same also holds for the chord type. We may write hybrid harmony for a constant chord type such as the major 7th chord or we may vary the chord type using any valid chord in thirds. Hybrid harmony root movement may take place in either the diatonic system of harmony, with the root cycles R3, R5 and R7, determined by the underlying 7-pitch diatonic scale. Alternatively, we may write in the symmetric system of harmony, where roots are based on the equal division of the octave. Here we have a number of options that I will show in the examples. The starting point is the selection of a 7 pitch diatonic scale, here an example on the tonic pitch E. Progression example 1 is in the diatonic harmony system and I'll illustrate the process. Step 1 is the design of the bass part here using positive root cycles only and starting and closing on the tonic degree E. Then in step 2 I decided on using constant tension S9 structures, with the notes in the three upper parts determined by the diatonic scale. In step 3 I write the voice leading. Hybrid harmony allows any connection between two consecutive chords. These connections are known as transformations in Schillinger parlance. There are six possible transformations when connecting two triads, a subject I covered in a separate video tutorial. Above the staff we find the two transformation types used here, labeled as clockwise and counterclockwise. This yields close position voicings in the upper layer with an overall descending trend. The green arrows indicate the preparation of the highest dissonant chordal function 9. The orange arrows show the resolution. In this example preparations are by suspended notes, 
in line with the traditional diatonic idiom. But we already observe resolution by leap, a freedom tolerated in the hybrid system. Let's listen to the example. Progression 2 is in the diatonic symmetric system, which is the result of writing a diatonic bass part in combination with an independent choice for, in this case, a fixed constant chord structure in the upper layer, here the minor 9 chord. So the bass part is identical to the previous example, but the upper layer is modified introducing altered pitches that lie outside of the original diatonic scale and marked here with orange arrows. They may move in the expected direction of the alteration, here shown with green arrows, or go in the opposite direction, shown in red. Again, there's no voice leading obligation in the hybrid harmony system. I maintain close position voicing in the upper layer and have marked preparation of the 9 and resolutions. Some may, by coincidence, comply with the diatonic system rules, but not necessarily. The sound of this example is definitely different from the diatonic solution and characteristic for a series of minor 9th chords. In progression 3, we see the first option in the symmetric harmony system, that is, an equal division of the octave with the two roots at the tritone 6 semitones interval. The chord structure and type are constant as 11, equivalent to a suspended dominant 9 chord. Again, we obtain non diatonic altered notes and the red arrows indicate that they are moving in the unexpected direction. The open position voicing is obtained from the alternating clockwise and counterclockwise transformation. The voice leading shows how both the highest dissonant chordal function 11 is prepared and the other functions are resolved by stepwise motion. The next symmetric system example has the three roots a major third apart. I selected constant tension hybrid harmony as 13 structures, yielding two alterations in the upper parts that happen to move in the appropriate direction within the original diatonic scale framework. The three upper layer parts in close position voicing form an incomplete major 7 chord with 5 omitted. Now we observe how some dissonant functions are approached by leap. The same holds for some of the resolutions. We have the freedom to select any type of transformation. Here it is a series of clockwise transformations and that will determine the voice leading and therefore the character of the dissonance resolution. The result has impressionistic music flavor. Progression 5 illustrates the symmetric 4 root system lying a minor third apart. Once again I decided on a constant tension S9 type progression. The voice leading is marked with arrows and shows how the transformations used here yield correct preparations and resolutions of the dissonant 7 and 9. Applying the constant major 9 chord type gives this example a shifting tonic root flavor. The final symmetric harmony system example has the roots forming a whole tone scale. 
This time the hybrid harmony tension and type are constant minor 9 chords. The upper layer is in close position voicing and the constant chord structure yields numerous pitch alterations. Counterclockwise transformations determine the voice leading, with appropriate preparations and resolutions of the 7 and 9. Again, a nice coincidence not required in the hybrid harmony system. I want to close this series of progressions with a hybrid harmony example that has variable tension. We will see more of that in part 2 of this series, but now it's time to demonstrate that degree of freedom in progression design, an option mentioned earlier in this tutorial. Also we will use variable tension in the full score example shown later. The diatonic scale is identical to that in progression example 1, but now we are in a different mode with tonic G. Step 1 is the bass part layout, based on a series of positive root cycles only, and with a strong quasi cadential 2 5 1 closing in minor. In step 2, I decided on using diatonic chords, with a predetermined tension pattern shown here. Then in step 3 I write the upper part's voice leading, with mixed close and open position voicing. The arrows show all sorts of dissonance preparation and resolution. This is not smooth voice leading and will disturb the overall diatonic harmony impression, but it is allowed in this technique. In this section I will present a short composition example using hybrid 4 part harmony. It is based on a 20 measures long chord progression that juxtaposes diatonic and hybrid harmony. If you have been watching the hybrid 5 part videos then you may have noticed that the examples presented there were with hybrid chords exclusively. In this example I want to show how to incorporate sections of hybrid harmony in a diatonic context. I use two hybrid harmony sections, one with constant tension S9 in the symmetric harmony system and the other with variable tension between S5 and S13 in the diatonic symmetric system. In order to achieve smooth voice leading I will apply transformations that maximize stepwise motion when connecting chords. This is the 4 part chord progression in the key of E major, with 3 diatonic harmony and 2 hybrid harmony sections. The diatonic sections contain inverted and extended chords. The first hybrid harmony subsection is with constant tension S9 in the symmetric system. And in the second half we see variable tension hybrid harmony with diatonic roots. Looking at the root movement we see mainly positive root cycles. There are two exceptions and the progression contains a dominant tonic closing cadence. The overall layout displays a tonic to subdominant to dominant and back to tonic area character. Inspecting the subsections in detail, we see the correct dissonance handling in the opening diatonic chords, with suspended note preparation and descending stepwise resolution. Note the single occurrence of the diatonic S9 chord. The symmetric system hybrid harmony shows the more or less coincidental correct dissonance handling in a series of S9 chords, but some altered notes are moving in the wrong direction. The next set of diatonic chords again adhere to the rules for dissonance handling in the A major 9 chord. The second hybrid harmony subsection demonstrates the independent selection of chord structure, 
characteristic for the diatonic symmetric harmony system, here with a variable tension. As before, dissonance preparation and resolution are marked with arrows. The progression closes in the diatonic system, with a dominant 9 chord leading into the tonic triad E major. Let's listen to this progression. Now we turn this progression into music, with a synthesizer texture at a tempo of 164 beats per minute and with an 8 note groove. The diatonic sections feature a synthesizer lead melody, the hybrid harmony sections are set for acoustic instruments, that is woodwinds in the symmetric harmony subsection and brass for the diatonic symmetric chords. Read along with the annotated score. The overall tonal mood of this example is hardly affected by the application of hybrid harmony. It just adds an interesting local harmonic touch to the surrounding diatonic setting. Let's summarize the content of this video. This tutorial is about the Schillinger hybrid four-part harmony technique that enables writing chord progressions with series of extended chords in thirds. We saw the two-layer character of hybrid harmony, with the root in the bass and a set of 11 possible upper three-part structures. I presented a number of example chord progressions that demonstrate the effect of variable voicing, tension and chord type, and a brief composition that uses sections with hybrid harmony. I myself use this technique frequently for transitions and modulations in the mainly diatonic context. In part 2 we will discuss remaining aspects of this technique and see more progressions and composition examples. Help the channel audience to grow in numbers. Please subscribe, push the like button and share this tutorial. Visit my website to find other types of content, purchase ebooks or make a donation in support of my efforts. And thanks for watching.